Hey, what's up, everybody? I have my cup of coffee here. I'm going to take a short break from playing the Eras Challenge to start building out some of the worlds a little bit. So we have some more people and sims to choose from. One and two, it'll be nice to have the worlds a little bit more populated. So along with the Eras Challenge videos, I'm going to also do some quick builds as we form some of the worlds. So if you have an idea of a house you want me to build or a family structure unit that you want me to also add into the worlds, leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, let's get started on our quick build. This is the lot I chose to build on. And then I wanted to get outside my comfort zone as I can explain it and I decided to build a tiny lot. I thought about doing a tier one tiny lot, but I'm not great at building small houses. So I went with a tier three tiny home just to kind of get started. I normally build really, really big houses in The Sims and they tend to take up most, if not all of the lots. So this was a challenge. <laughs> for my building techniques. Most of the time I build the huge house and then I go to work on the outside and like, oh, we don't really have a yard for the Sims anymore because I use it up for my house. And so switching to a tiny home was really difficult for me to get a hang of. And it was a lot of fun. I think I might try when we build out the world for the Eras Challenge to add some more of the tiny houses into the mix. Cause this was a lot of fun for me to figure out and I wanna try maybe a tier one tiny house and see how it goes. The kitchen has been difficult because I always like the corner kitchens and so trying to figure out how to fit the dining room and kitchen all together was a challenge. If you all have different ways of building kitchens, let me know. I would love to hear different takes on how to put a kitchen together. Because this was a struggle, but I finally got it. I was pretty impressed with how the final product turned out. And then I tried to keep it as open concept as I could, just because if I kept walling things in to make specific rooms, it would really feel closed off and unwelcoming. So instead of closing off the kitchen to make it its own individual space, I just put a half wall in and then the other side I was going to do the living room, which was really nice because we have the hide a bed for the living room. So technically I don't have a two bedroom house, but it's like a 1.5 bedroom because the Sims can sleep on the hide a bed. And then I also built an actual bedroom for the Sims. So that was a really nice addition that I added to it. And I like how the kitchen and living room turned out because it's its own individual space, but it's so open concept that it doesn't feel enclosed and encapsulated. And then I was like, well, I do need to build a bathroom. So I want to do that next. Otherwise, I would forget about it. And the way I build is sometimes I put the appliances in first before I wall it in. And that's what I did with the bathroom because I wanted to make it as com uh, compact as I could. And if I walled it, then I would have to like change those dimensions and it would be a lot harder to make it smaller. I could have made it smaller if I didn't put the sink in, but I really wanted the sink. And so the next to the bathroom, I was like, well, that could be a, like a main bedroom where the Sims could sleep. And that's where I could put the computer in as like a bedroom office combo. So whoever gets to have the bedroom that's going to be walled in um, also gets to have the computer kind of an idea with it. And I like kind of how the form of this house is taking. I tried to wall in the living room and that's where I decided it was probably best not to wall it in because it was looking really cramped and crowded. And so I had to redesign the kitchen because it was still looking not particularly right. And so I decided on not doing a corner kitchen, but doing like a stove and counter area and then adding the fridge in. And I don't know about all y'all, 
but I really like having easels in my house because not only is it great for extra income, but if my sim is doing a job where they use a lot of brain power, it's an easy way for them to get unstressed. And then on top of that, I really wanted to put a mural on the wall and so I couldn't figure out where to put the easel when I wanted the mural there. So that took me a little bit of doing and then I found there was a sp spot between the half wall and the TV that was perfect for the easel. So that was really exciting. It was coming all together really, really well. And roofs have been the, like the hardest thing for me to figure out in The Sims. I used to, like, building houses in general have been really hard. I used to just build a box and stick all my Sims in the box. Like, I didn't even have a roof or anything. It was literally, like, a cardboard box. And I said, here you go, Sims. Here's your lovely house you get to have. And looking back, I wish I had some of my original sims houses saved because they were really really bad and i've come a long way i still have a ways to go so if you have any tips or tricks with building i would love to hear more about it because i've learned so much so far and i know there's even more i can learn with building in the sims so that's <laughs> what i've learned and like i said my first house was horrible just completely awful actually that save didn't last very long because not only did i decide to build a really bad just box like house i also built it way too big and spent all my sims money on making this house and so they had no money and then they couldn't pay their bills <laughs> and eventually their power and electricity were turned off and i learned a very important lesson about budgeting for having power and electricity because when that happened then they couldn't shower they couldn't eat they couldn't um, take a bath and they were very uncomfortable because they had no lights <laughs> and so not only was that going on at the house but then they go to work and they they weren't progressing in their work so i couldn't pay off their bills that were overdue and on top of it they were decreasing in their work and they were like about to get fired and at that point i just gave up i was like this this is an unsavable game i cannot save it and so then i moved on and i learned an important lesson about not overspending in the game because it's really hard to catch back up and that's when i started as i've talked to this channel before i started summer's household and that went oh my goodness so much better however they had too many children <laughs> and like i am not great at parenting sims children very well i tend to forget that they have needs and i need to help them because they can't do things themselves and so summer started out really well and then she had um six kids which gave me a full house and it got stressful so i had one of her teens graduate early because he was doing really well in school and then move out <laughs> and then she just kept having more and more kids and then the more and more kids i had would move out because i wanted like a more calm and relaxing game and not chaos in the house so i'd have more move out and then she'd have more kids and then when she got to be an elder i was like finally finally you're not going to have any more kids we're good and then she started adopting them like and she didn't even she wasn't even family oriented it was just bizarre how many kids she had i think she finally ended with like 14 kids in this family tree i don't know i still have that saved so if you ever want to see summer and her family and hear all about the random stories that they have let me know because it's it's pretty chaotic now the thing i was most proud about with building this house was actually doing the garden because like i said most of my builds don't have a backyard like at all zero backyards <laughs> with the builds and so this one since it's a tiny house 
I was actually able to make it really quiet and quaint and like have a pool and a hot tub and a little fire and an eating area. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I make a garden, like a secret garden walkthrough. I haven't used the romantic garden pack very much. And so I wanted to try it. And so I made like a little rose path walkthrough. And my envision for this was like a place that you could have like a beautiful wedding at like the bride walks through the archway and you have the guests sitting and ready for a wedding and I really liked the fountain however it wasn't giving the wedding vibe because it was taking up too much of the space and so eventually I decided that this fountain was not for this build and I still liked the wishing well so I kept the wishing well and I thought we could set like chairs and stuff for that like figurative wedding in my head right and then I wanted to add some more flowers and just make it look really romantic with a big huge weeping willow looking tree and then I also wanted because I thought it would be fun to have little bush animals sitting and looking over the bushes the rose bushes as the bride walks down or the groom walks down you know and so <laughs> I have little animals peeking over the bushes and I thought it was adorable. Now, something I should probably work more on and I'm still trying to figure it out. So again, if you have any tips or tricks, let me know is how to use the painting tools to make like walks to the house and everything. I did okay on this, but I know I still have a lot of work to go on it. So again, if you have any tips or tricks for me, leave them in the comments below. If you want to see me build a different type of a house, let me know and I will I will do my best to build that house. <laughs> it won't, might not be the best, but I will, I will see what happens. So I wanted to also make it more secluded, so I built a lot of big trees. And I wanted, like I said, my vision for this house was like having weddings here. And so I wanted to make it sunny and I wanted to give it a romantic aura and then I also I love dogs and so I wanted to give it some dogs in the house and so that was the house build and then I wanted to build a family to go in the house and I want to with each world and house that I build for the Taylor Swift challenge I want to make a variety of families that live there. So this is one of the families that I built to go in the house with the romantic garden scene and everything. And unlike the Taylor Swift house that I spent hours on designing the characters and every time they age up, I redesign them. I went a little faster on these designs just since they're populating the world, but I'm not physically probably going to play them. I do want them to kind of like vibe with each other though. So I did put a little bit of effort into it, but as you can see, it's not as much as with my Taylor Swift videos that I put into them. And so I have these two that are married and they have a kid. I love the playing with the jeans area where you can put the two spouses in and then like I randomize the child until I find one that I'm like, yeah, this, this matches. And so then I just quickly gave them traits and everything for the house. And, you know, I think it turned out pretty good. We, we got, <laughs> we got a cute little family. Hey everyone. Thank you again for watching the quick build for the Taylor Swift Eras challenge. I hope you enjoyed it and leave a comment below on what you want to see me build next or any other challenges you want to see me do. Like always, have a great morning, afternoon, night, wherever you're at, and I'll see you next time.